First, let's look at Trueworths, uh, and, uh, which is the other company we're examining. Trueworths and Forshini, and look at their clothing uh, sectors. I want to add something about the clothing, because yes, it's a process of doing the sourcing in the China and all that stuff, but of course they do produce some of the stuff here locally. There are a range of kind of contract manufacturers who are used for limited lines. There's a bit of cut and trim and assembly of parts that come in from places and get done in areas like Lesotho and Malawi and even Mauritius and so on. But all in all, I mean, it's a fashion game, and that's, of course, very trend dependent. I think these guys do well. I think their lending practices and their store practices are good, and I don't think they're going to be easy for these foreign top shops and Zara's and the likes of those stores and Gap and all the others that want to come to South Africa and get into Africa generally. I think they're very well positioned. Do you, which clothing brand do, do you prefer, Truist or Forshini, or the brands within those stables? Are you saying from a market point of view or a fashion <laughs> no, point of view? Personally, who are you wearing today, Daniel? Uh, well, to be honest today, I'm actually wearing Woolworths. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that and puts things into perspective. That happens to be my preferred stock in the whole retail space. But uh, that aside, um, I think the Truers and Fashini names are very comparable with their, with their clothing brands. Look, so something very important to be aware of is that people, people often see them and they think that they are extremely comparable. You've got Truers Man versus Markham versus Fashini. Those, those names are very comparable, but within the Fashini stable, you've got jewellery, you've got cellular, you've got quite a few other things in that mix which Truers doesn't, doesn't have. So or more diversification have. in the Fashini Exactly, exactly. Stable. And even within clothing, you've got uh, quite a significant sports exposure, like Total Sports, etc. And that's usually a lower margin business with all the international names in there, like, for example, all the footwear names, Nike, etc. You get a much low, lower margin on that business. So looking at it from a group point of view, Truer's margins will always be higher than Fashini's. Because Just because they haven't gone into they have more exposure. Exactly. They have more exposure to that high margin, pure clothing focus. So does that make it a better model? Look, I like those international brands. I've said many times as well before that that sporting theme is very popular with women and with young people because that's sort of a new trend that people wear sports gear as sort of semi-fashion wear. And that has a technology angle as well because you've no doubt noticed when you go to these stores you're being offered all sorts of gizmos to help you improve your running performance and all that kind of thing as well. So that's a plus for me, but I do acknowledge the brands Do you take them up on those offers All the time. No, no, runner? absolutely. Yes, I'm a big fan of such things. I mean, it is ultimately, though, the best possible margin of all to make, uh, you know, kind of fashion items that are being shown up in the magazines because that's where the fashion stuff comes from. And you know that you can walk into the stores and get similar items, but which have been manufactured with fantastic margins. So that's why I like the operation. Although I will concede that it is quite a mixed picture. There's also the bottom end to worry about because the cheaper stuff is obviously the sort of Mr. Price type environment. Identity is down there in Truist. So where I think these groups are both focusing is on the slightly higher margin fashion items, which is always but a But isn't that game. the space? You mentioned it early, earlier, Zara, Topshop. Aren't we seeing how are they going to respond to that international competition, those brands? So I think that it's very important to have a credit offering for those brands predominantly because the price points are so high. So if you're selling a, a garment above a certain price level, the general affordability of the country is such that you need to offer credit. And these guys are coming in and they're not offering enough credit to support the volumes that the likes of Truers and Fashini uh, can support. Plus, they've spent years and years getting a store footprint across the country. These guys are just coming in now. They literally can't get space in some of the, in some of the shopping centers that they would like to be in. So. I don't think it's as much of a threat as you, would, as you would initially think. And you don't think it's a threat either? Well, I think that's an excellent point that Daniel has made. In other words, He's Zara clever, can come he? in and put in one store Thank in Sant and what are they going to do? You know, they, can't, they don't have country scale such that they can do you know, countrywide distribution, sourcing, warehousing and all of that stuff and buying. Isn't it just a matter of time though? Look, I suppose some of them might get big enough to do that, and they're not monkeys. They wouldn't have gotten the size they are globally. You know, Zara belongs to Inditex, which is Spanish and one of the largest retailers of clothing all around the world, and they've gone into many countries before and cleaned up. So I don't think one should be complacent, but all I'm saying is these guys, the two we're talking about tonight, are very well experienced, and they also have that multi-store management model. So in one mall, you could have five or six different stores. You don't even realize. You think they're different shops, but they all belong to the same group. They've got one you know, center manager who's running between the two. 
There's a whole lot of cross-credit availability that can be done, so they can roll out a store, you know, identity, you know, sort of yeah, let's talk loyalty about this card. In store, let's talk about this in-store credit and, and whether it's working for these retailers. Well, look, I mean, it's definitely, it's a significant part of both Fashini and Truworth's sales. I think for Fashini, it's making up in the 60% of their, of their sales, and for Truworth's, over 70%. So you can see it's a significant driver. And like I said, that's because uh, targeting the market that they are targeting, those more mid-range uh, L LSMs, targeting that area, for them to be able to afford the price points that these garments are selling at, you need some credit in the mix, which is different, for example, to a Woolworths because they're targeting a higher LSM, and therefore the guys have the money to buy the garments, they don't need the credit. So that's an essential part of that model. Who is edging ahead on the in the clothing space? Is I it Chubas or Fulshini? I think they've both got a great mix. I was always quite excited about the sports stuff, but I concede the margins there aren't quite as fat. So I think it's a dead heat. A dead heat? Daniel? Uh, I think I'd like to say that uh, I prefer Truer's more core focus on the, on the pure clothing side. Because of the higher margin. Because of the higher margin, the, the quicker turn, it's just, and the higher cash generation.